Hello everyone, my name is Imanshu Sharma. In this video, we will test a simple auth setup where a client will interact with the authorization server, receives a token and then use the token to make a request to resource server. So let's get started. So in this, we will be creating three projects, our client, our authorization server and our resource server. So let's head to the Spring IO website. And here you can specify the name and then you can say spring and let's start with the resource server. So our resource server we will be using spring web. Okay, so initially let's keep our setup simple. So we will be saying that okay, we need just a spring web on resource server and then for uh, auth client also we will be using the same so first we will check a simple uh, rest template uh, call from our client to resource server and see if things are working uh, without providing any security and then uh, we will be using the authorization server for that our uh, dependency will be uh, authorization server so it will be author uh, yeah this one Okay, this is the only dependency we need for the our server. So I'll walk you through the POM XML also when we get into the individual projects. And we'll be using Maven, Java 3.15 Spring Boot version and Java 21. All right, so this is how your setup will be. And all right, let's head to the project. So first, uh, let's open the resource server and let's open it in your uh, favorite id oh, i'm using intellij uh, okay oh it's loading and all right let's update the defender configuration Okay, it's the Windows feature uh, required to add this path as an exception for as an exclusion list in Defender. So, okay, we have the project now and first let's create a controller, right? So, okay, even before that, uh, for resource server, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we'll be using just a starter web. Okay, so now let's add a controller package right and here we will be saying uh, okay let's create a message controller and then we say okay rest controller and then we say public is create a simple get endpoint the string hello and we are returning hello from resource server right that's it and then uh, we will be saying uh, as a get mapping so this is going to be a get mapping of hello endpoint that's it and in the properties okay let's rename it let's go with the yaml this time so we say yaml let's head over to our config and here is a server and I want port to be 8181 right all right so this is our uh, resource server it's simple we just saying that okay um, sending a string hello from resource server and making the endpoint of a hello endpoint so let's run our application okay let's head to this and let's run it okay and it should be start it started so let's test our endpoint once we say 81 81 and this is going to be hello right so we send it okay it's working all right so now let's head to the client so let's open the client project so client project is auth client and open it and 
and again defender let's add it all right so here again let's get to the package let's let's create a controller and let's name it as a uh, client controller okay and then again it is going to be a rest controller and then this one will also returning a message right and what it's going to return it will be returning a string right so let's say it returns success followed by the payload right so uh, okay we'll add the payload uh, i mean payload is the response from our um, resource server so this one is going to be a get mapping of message endpoint and let's create a rest template uh, rest template and then we are saying rest template dot exchange and the endpoint is local host and we set that to 8181 hello endpoint and this is what this is what uh, uh, get endpoint right so and we are not passing any body here it's just a get request and then um, what else we need yeah we need it to be a string type right so the response will be of string okay like this all right so we are making an exchange let's create a variable right and this will be our response so it will look like this okay so we have a we are making a request to hello endpoint uh, get endpoint and we are expecting it to be responding with the string message and then we will be appending the uh, body right so in our case the body should be a string all right so let's run this application and before that let's change the server port of this one so let's change it to 8082 right let's save it client controller this is done and let's run this application All right, so application started. Now let's hit this endpoint. So this is our uh, message endpoint on 8082. So what we will do is say 8082 and it should give me a message where I got a success and then hello from resource server. All right, so our client and resource server are interacting perfectly fine uh, without any security. But now we need to secure our uh, um, uh, resource server so that the endpoint is no longer freely available to anyone and only the authorized clients uh, can access this endpoint okay so let's head to the authorization server okay so let's open the authorization server project and yeah and before that i think i missed this thing uh, i'll show you very quickly even the client also if i see there is only one dependency web so i have not enabled security as of now in any of these okay so now let's head to the uh, authorization server so what i'm going to do is let's open this one in the id all right it is opening i name yeah defender okay so this is fine all right so now what we are going to do is first we are going to create a config why we need to create a config because your author okay sorry 
your authorization server should have the information of your uh, users your uh, authorization server should have the user data so that it can validate whether the incoming request is from a valid user or not or in case of a client it uh, it should also hold the information for the client and when we are saying client client can be an app also like in this case also we have a client as a uh, spring boot app only right so that kind of information client information user information that should be available in the author should be uh, available to the authorization server so in our setup we will be putting it in the code itself or in the configuration file but in the production one it do, those information are stored somewhere where the authorization server can access and validate okay so here what we are going to do is we'll create a config so we say okay security config right and this is what this is a configuration right and what we are doing is we are creating one user so what you're going to say is you need to create a user detail service bean and we are saying in memory uh, uh, users users right and then we are saying bean okay that's fine and what we are going to return is we are going to return a new in memory user detail manager right and let's do one thing let's name this itself like this only okay so it, this is our in memory user details manager all right yeah because it is holding the uh, information for our users so let's uh, let's build it we say the user dot builder right so produce local variable i don't need that i can say like builder or i can say user builder and then i'm saying user builder dot uh username right so for my user the name is this and then password it's going to be uh what password the strongest one and here since i'm using the plain one what i can do is i can say that okay i am not using any encoding so no op if you want to use the en encoding what you can do is you need to specify here as bcrypt and then use a, a bcrypt generator uh, get the bcrypt value of this password and you can put that over here okay so for this i am keeping it as no uh, uh, password and then the roles i'm saying that my user have a roles as user and admin right and you can say build uh, okay and then i am passing it here so what i can do is i create a name right so this one so what i am doing is i'm saying user builder with username and password and roles right so you're saying user builder with username password roles and then finally build it and put this user into my uh, in memory detail manager and then return this bean all right so this is what we need and then again it's set to the config so this time let's change it to what yaml and let's set to the server port so we say server port and the port here is going to be 8080 right and yeah this is pretty much it this, this is what i think we all uh, we need for now so let's uh, run it once let's see what happens so let's run our application and it is started right it is started so our authorization server is started but now what we have to do is we need to secure our uh, resource server endpoint so how we are going to do that let's head to the resource server so here now what we have to do is in case of resource server also we need to create a config in this config we are saying that we need to uh, we are enabling the security filter chains and for that you say that okay create a security config 
all right but before proceeding further right now pom xml if i see i only have web so what we are going to do is we need a dip on one more dependency for resource server so we head out to initialize our website and here look for a resource server this one right and then instead of generating just uh, explore because the only thing we need is this dependency entry that's it so we copy it close it back to our code we are on resource server fine we paste it over here and then we rebuild the uh, update the main project so okay this is done now what we are going to do is we say that okay this is our configuration and in this case what we are going to do is we need to enable the security filter chain right so here this is going to be our security filter chain and this time we are injecting this beam okay this method will require uh, will require http security and we do this uh, as authorized http requests and we are saying that okay authenticate every request uh, every incoming request to this service so what i'm going to say is authorize any request i'm getting okay and then i'm saying authenticated so hope you guys are familiar with this one we have done the similar thing in the uh, past uh, videos so let's do it like this okay and authorize uh, http request and wait why is giving me error okay add exception fine we need and then what we are going to do is we say auth to resource server right and here we are saying uh, auth2 and auth2 dot jwt okay and then again we are saying customizer with default so what you are looking for is now we are looking for the jwt token whenever an uh, incoming request is coming it should be having a valid jwt token and how our resource server is getting to know whether that token is a jwt1 we are going to specify the things in uh, the application yaml file about the issuer of that token so where this resource server can validate okay so we say return uh, right return http security dot build right that's pretty much it this is the only config needed over here and yeah that's all customizer that's it done and now let's head to the yaml file here as i mentioned we need to tell that okay that the token will be coming from a issuer right so let me paste the snippet i have and what we are going to do is we'll paste it like this okay so here spring security or to resource server jwt issuer url here we are saying that the jwt issuer url is actually this one this is our authorization server okay so this is the whole configuration needed at the resource server end now let's run our application all right it is started so now our endpoints are under the security of our authorization server and uh, we make changes in the authorization server i think i am not sure whether i did that uh, yeah fine this is fine so now for now our yeah our resource server is secured so let's again try hitting the endpoint and see what happens yep we are getting what error why because now our client if we go to the client is getting an exception and the exception is an uh, client error unauthorized right because now client is not unauthorized okay so now we need to make our client authorized and for that what we have to do is we need to register our client as an authorized entry in the authorization server okay and from there we get a token all right so let's head to the yeah client only so yeah we are on the client and we have web dependency so now let's go to the 
initialize your website and see do we have a dependency for client and yes we do or to client and we explore again and we get what client right this is the client one dependency all right then close this move this add this entry over here we save it and we update the main build okay this is done and now what i'm going to do is i need to update the configuration over here at the yaml so i need to add some entries and i will tell you what those are about so here so just to save the time i already have the project uh, so i'm just putting it over here in the snippet uh okay so this is the most important entry which we forgot in other places and what this is going to do is it will add colors to logs right so let's do it let's add it everywhere uh right this is what authorization server right so we can see here right this one this is fine let's keep it like this and we will restart later this is client and let's add it in the resource server also right so fine we will restart all of them later all right so in the client what we did was we added these entries so what we are saying the client is that okay now for the client the auth to client provider is spring which for which the issuer uri is our uh, the authorization server endpoint so from here we will be getting the tokens and then this is what contains the registration information of our client so here what we are saying is this red client is actually your registration id this will become the registration id of your client then we have a client id we named it as demo the provider is spring we are using the spring authorization server if you are using google or any other you need to update this accordingly client secret again a uh, strong secret we have and that secret you can specify any string but usually these are encoded and and these are uh, this is not a good approach uh, for storing the secrets like this but we are doing it in this setup uh, authorization grant type we are saying authorization code a uh, client authentication method is client secret basic and the redirect url here we are saying is base url so in this case it will be uh, localhost 8082 and then the registration id it will eventually end up with this one rec client and the scope here we are saying user dot read and open id okay so these are the entries we made at the client end similar kind of entries we need to make at the uh, authorization server end right so let's head to the authorization server and i as i mentioned earlier authorization server should have access to both the information the user information which we in our case we put it over here as well as the client information like right, which we are going to provide it over here so in this case what we are going to do is we will be uh, putting the snippet which i have here all right again it's it's quite similar and here again see uh, so we uh, okay so let's start from here so security or to authorization server client is our demo client right and uh, this require authorization consent true what it will do is it will show you a screen uh, a, a consent screen so we will get that uh, when we see the at uh, the demo and then in the registration here we are not specifying the registration id right you don't see reg client over here we are just specifying client id client secret here again the same thing as we did for the user if you want to encrypt it you can encrypt it you can say that okay bcrypt over here and uh, encrypt the secret value in a bcrypt format and put it over here if you don't want to do that for now you can just put it nop and the plain secret right Uh, authorization grant types again client credentials authorization code and we are looking for a refresh token redirect uris we are saying this is the same one 
see the redirect URI here is what this one is the 8082 the client port right login or to code and then this is the registration ID so if I just copy this one and I go over here client and we can just quickly compare uh, okay, okay it breaks down all right all right no problem yeah so this is our base URL here right login so these two entries are same and the red client will become your registration ID right which is this one all right uh, that's it so let's head to the uh, auth server okay so we place our entries so authorization server have our client information here and it have uh, have all this user information in our uh, uh, security config okay now let's uh, restart our authorization server All right, started and now let's head to the client and let's uh, start our client once okay it started and then and you can see the colors we are getting the colors now right and then in the resource server let's start this one it's quite black and white over here and start it uh, yeah it started right so now let's testing time so let's head to the browser and we say right and what we are saying is we need to access the message endpoint right we should return that hello from resource server appending with su uh, success message so let's see what happens yeah see it redirect to authorization server we sp specified 8082 now it changed to 8080 localhost and it's looking for login so let's provide the details which is himanshu and the password is password uh, wait, I miss password okay let's sign it this is what i was uh, talking about when i was saying the required consent true part so here you are getting that okay consent required yes and you're saying user dot read yes and we say submit consent let's submit it and we are getting the white page right and now what i'm saying is let's hit it and we're still getting the error why let's see why we are getting the error uh client okay 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 uh yeah that that's that's absolutely fine because because uh we have registered the client that's for sure that's why we are getting the consent screen and everything but now in the client controller we are still requesting uh, with the normal url we are not providing the token over here right we are not providing the token information so now what is happening is even though the client is registered but when it's making a request to the resource server resource server is looking for a, a valid token which is issued by the authorization server okay so now for that what we have to do is we need to provide the token so how we can do that right so what you can do is in this case you can say okay we need a uh, uh, one of the class it is on our two auth two client client uh, auth two it authorize authorized client service something client yeah authorized to client service this one or uh, to authorized client service correct and we are saying auth uh, auth to authorized client service right it's too big okay. this one should be fine and we can check this one and what we are going to do is we are going to use this one this this service because from here if i open this what you can get is if i open this it will load the uh, authorized client using the registration id registration id we are aware of and the principal name how we can get it at the principal name that i will uh, tell you and from here it will give me an authorized client instance and if i go into authorized client instance here i can see that i have the access token this is what i need because i need to send this in the request okay so what i'm going to do is let close this one authorized client uh, service right so 
what you are going to do is we say that uh, authorized client service here and we say we need this method right and this method is looking for a registration id right and a principal name so yeah registration id and principal name registration id is the same one which we have provided over here right right client so what we can do is we can provide over here this client principal name how we can get it is when you're making a request here you can pass uh principal also so you can say principal is part of that uh, java security uh, package right uh, so what you can do is you can say principal so it will automatically get injected and uh, in the request and then here you can say uh, uh, principal dot get name right so here you will get the name so this in our case this is uh, the username we we provided that is uh, himanshu and here uh, we are getting the registration id right so what happened is now i get the authorized client loaded this one this will give me authorized client right if i do another now i need the access token so here i am getting the access token now this is again an object uh, if you see this is an object right i need the exact value the the, the token value where is that it should be here somewhere right get value so what we can do is let's uh close this one is a get access token then we say get uh, get token value yeah token value right so what i'm what we are getting is uh auth authorized service uh then we are saying load client and then we are saying uh, the local variable and here we are naming it as access token right oh wait wait uh all right access token okay so we get the access token here which is a string all right we get the token value and now we need to pass it in the uh, in our request so how we are going to pass it is here right now we are passing as request entity null because we are not sending any header information and we also don't have any body because we are just making a simple get request so we need to change that so we say that okay we need an entity now so we say http entity uh, new uh, entity uh, new http it's http entity right uh, like this and this one this object we need and this object we need to uh, pass over here now how we are going to create this entity this entity we can create we just need to pass the header so right so what we need is we need headers first so we say http headers http headers equals to new http headers you get the http headers object you say object and here we are going to set the header name and value right so head, header name in our case is authorization and the value is and you need to be careful here you need to specify bearer and then there should be a space then you need to append the token so we say access token like this right and then we use the ctp headers here and then finally it get injected into the request all right so what we did was we just created a header and we in that header we are saying that okay it's a authorization header we are passing the access token value and that value we are getting it from the client service where we have a method load authorized client which is uh, using the registration id and the principal name and it will give me the access token value okay and yeah that's it so this is the snip additional snippet we add and then on the http entity rest this one will remain uh, as is all right so now let's uh, restart our auth client just the auth client and let's see how who will it behave okay started so let's head to the uh, browser let's close it okay let's see uh let's see let's see okay Zero one is zero eight two, right? And what we are looking for is message 
yeah we are getting the message but okay it's storing the previous value that is why it's showing up right away so what i will do is let me close it okay let's let's restart our services once let's start authorization server okay now uh, and it yeah it started and let's restart the resource uh, resource server uh, yeah let's restart the resource server and let's restart the client server okay fine so now what we are going to do is let's open a new window one two some and we say 82 message right and here you are sign in yep you're saying yeah consent uh, demo wants to access your account Himanshu right so the principal name right and our client and we say submit and yes it's working so let's head to our setup okay yeah so let's revisit one last time so the auth server uh, let me show you the configurations uh, very quickly uh, okay so in the auth server so we have the security config where we specify the user detail and in the yaml we specify the client registration detail okay so this is the connecting point for both client and resource uh, server now let's head to the client in the client uh, what we are saying is uh, we uh, updated the the request approach where we access the uh, access token from the uh, client service okay and then injected in our request and even before that we updated the config of our client and make the entries required for its registration to the authorization server where we are specifying the issuer uri also and yeah here's the secret which is specified over here and the same is used alongside no op in the authorization server okay and make sure you are aware of this one this is going to be your uh, registration id and whatever you are going to provide over here that needs to be highlighted in uh, where is that uh, authorization over here okay and the last one the resource server the resource server in the config we activated the the filter chains the security filter chain where we are saying that authorize any request and look for the jwt and in the yaml configuration we just saying that okay the resource server uh, for this resource server the issuer ur is going to be this one so whenever you are getting the jwt the jwt issuer is the authorization server present on this location and okay so that's that's all in this video all the the, the three code base uh, for authorization server resource server and the uh, auth client will be available in the git repo i will uh, share the details in the link uh, and yeah th that's all in this video thank you everyone thanks for watching if you have any suggestions or feedback please let me know in the comment section thank you and have a nice day